this is the word of the living God. This is the sword of the spirit. And with this sword, I'm cutting off the devil's head. Today, his head is being cut off in my life as I hear the word and obey the word in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Chop it off and simulate that you are chopping off the devil's influence in your life. We're going to have you to turn today to the book of Second Chronicles, chapter number 15. Second Chronicles, chapter number 15. We're going to begin reading at verse number one. I'm going to have you to read out loud with me, if you will. And when you got it, just say, I got it. All right. Two of you got it. So let's see if everybody else can get it. <laughs> Second Chronicles, chapter number 15. Beginning at verse number one, we're going to go down to verse 17, but we're going to skip about just a little bit. So you'll be able to see where uh, what verses we are reading just for the sake of time. But beginning at verse number one in Second Chronicles, chapter 15, beginning at verse one. Here it says, and the spirit of God came upon Azariah, the son of Obed, and he went out to meet Asa and said unto him, hear ye me, Asa, and all Judah and Benjamin the Lord is with you while you be with while you be with him and if you seek him he will be found of you but if you forsake him he will forsake you let's go down to verse number seven be ye strong therefore and let not your hands be weak for your work shall be rewarded verse eight and when Asa heard these words and the prophecy of Obed, the prophet, he took courage and put away the abominable idols out of all the land of Judah and Benjamin and out of the cities which he had taken from Mount Ephraim and renewed the altar of the Lord that was before the porch of the Lord. And he gathered all Judah and Benjamin and the strangers with them out of Ephraim and Manasseh and out of Simeon for they fell to him out of Israel in abundance when they saw that the Lord his God was with him. Verse number 12. And they entered into a covenant to seek the Lord God of their fathers with all their heart and with all their soul. And whosoever would not seek the Lord God of Israel should be put to death, whether small or great, whether man or woman. Verse 15, and all Judah rejoiced at the oath for they had sworn with all their heart and sought him with their whole desire and he was found of them and the Lord gave them rest round about. And also concerning Maacah, the mother of Asa, the king, he, re he removed her from being queen because she had made an idol in a grove. And Asa cut down her idol and stamped it and burned it at the brook Kidron. But the high places were not taken away out of Israel. Nevertheless, the heart of Asa was perfect all his days. May God add a blessing to the reading of his word and may those who are hearing also receive a blessing. We're going to use for a subject title today, Seek God with a Perfect Heart. Everybody repeat that with me. Say, Seek God. Seek with a perfect heart. Here we're seeing King Asa as he ascends to the throne of Judah. He is over the two tribes, Judah and Benjamin. And of course, you know, the kingdom had split in Israel. The 10, the 10 uh, nations or the 10 uh, other tribes, I should say, had moved to the north country and they had their capital in Samaria and Asa's capital was in Jerusalem. And we find that Obed the prophet comes to him and he begins to prophesy to him and he tells him that the Lord is with you. As long as you seek him, you will be found of the Lord. And so he began to say these things and talk about how God would be with him. And as long as he has a perfect heart before the Lord. And so he began to received that as a received that word and the bible says he took courage everybody say he took courage. he took courage once he received a word from god that was so positive he took courage and began to do something about it 
He went and he began to tear down the idols. He began to remove all the evidence that they were worshiping idols. And when he did that, you know, God was pleased with all of that. And it says that Israel entered into an oath. And the oath had to do with as long as you serve the Lord and keep his commandments, then God is going to continuously bless you and God will be with you. And if anyone will not serve the Lord and seek him, then they would then be put to death. Now, that was some kind of an oath, wasn't it? So they agreed with that oath. And so Asa, of course, he had a good heart before God, but he went and, and he realized his mother had made an idol. Now, this was a real test right here to see how sincere his heart was. But his mother was queen and she had made an idol and she figured I can do what I want to do. I'm the queen. But Asa said, oh, no, I, I honor God above that. Mama, you're going to take down that idol. <laughs> so he went and tore down his mother's idol. Say he stamped on the thing and began to just call it, you know, just an evil thing. And then he said, now, mama, just because you my mama don't mean that you can do anything you want to do. Amen. Just because you're the queen, it don't mean you can do anything you want to do because I'm the king. And if you're going to serve idols, mama, you're fired. He took his mama down from being queen because he did not want idolatry in all the land. However, it said that he still left the high places, the places up in the mountains and in the hills where they used to go and smoke dope. You know, I'm just wanting to bring it down to modern day term because what they would do was they would go up there and they would burn incense to their idol gods. And in those places, they were secret places that they had in the high places. And so they would go and they would, they would smell the, uh, the smoke that would come up from the incense and the incense would cause them to begin to see things that they shouldn't be seeing. We call it hallucinations, but we know they were seeing demons, amen? And so while they were looking at that, then that would, that would really bring the people backwards. But the high places were still there, but yet Asa, had demanded and commanded the people, do not serve idols. Now I want you to observe a few things here because this is exactly the kinds of things that happen in our lives today when we come to know the Lord. The scripture here tells us, if you seek God, he will be found of you. Now this is very, very important to seek God. It's not that God is, is lost and it's not that he is hidden, but there are mysteries in God. How many of you know that the Bible is filled with mysteries? And in order for us to really get to know God in an intimate way, we need to seek out his mysteries. And as we are seeking out his mysteries, we begin to understand him more and more. And we begin to love him more and more because the more we understand about God, the more we're going to love him. And so that's why he said, keep on seeking me, keep on studying me, keep on searching me out. Because what's happening while you are searching me out, you are being found of the Lord. And then actually God uh, then allows himself to, to reveal things to you. He will, he will give you revelation knowledge of himself. And so there's no, nobody can get revelation knowledge except those who seek him. So we're finding today that we have lost the art of seeking God. Oh, people really, they, they, have a, they have a desire for God, but it's something about that seeking. If you, he said, remember he says this, but if you forsake God, he will do what? He will forsake you. Now, this was in the prophecy. As long as you are seeking God, he will be found. But if you forsake God, then he will forsake you. Now, I know the scripture says in the New Testament that he will never leave you, nor will he forsake you. And so everybody's like, oh, yes, you know, we know he says he will never forsake me. He's never going to leave me. But who was he talking to? You know, everybody is blessed of God. Everybody has some form of a blessing from God. But the children of, of God are the only ones who receive favor of God. This favor is called grace and it is an unmerited favor. How many of you would take grace over just a blessing any day? See, a blessing is just what everybody receives because that's a common thing. 
But the favor of God, the grace of God is a very special kind of a blessing because God will do special things for his own children. So I want to be in the category of being a child of God, in fact, a son of God, which are the mature ones. So the children of God receive greater blessing because their, their blessing is called favor. All right. So this is why it is so necessary for us to continue to seek God so that we find what he wants us to find and learn more of him. But what we find today is that there are many people who will easily turn away from the faith. They, they, they come in, and in fact, I've had people that ask me quite a bit recently, why is it that you know, people will they'll join the church or they will go and pray the sinner's prayer, and next thing you know, after they've made this commitment, then they go and turn away from it so fast. Why does that happen? Well, we're going to see that in this in this lesson today, because we're going to read a little bit more of what happened with King Asa, because all we see right now is that Asa was a good king and Asa loved God. And it says that Asa was uh, or had had a perfect heart before God all his days. And I want you to remember that because that's a very important statement right there. But we're going to go down to verse number one in chapter six now. So that we can begin to look at some other things so that we can bring this home for where we are today. Second Chronicles chapter 16, beginning at verse number one. Right. If you have that, I'd like you to read that out loud with me. Ready? Read. In the sixth and thirtieth year of the reign of Asa, Baash, a king of Israel, came up against Judah and built Ramah to the intent that he might let none, go, let none go out or come in to Asa, king of Judah. Then Asa brought out silver and gold out of the treasures of the house of the Lord and of the king's house and sent to Ben-Hadad, king of Syria, that dwelt at Damascus, saying, There is a league between me and thee, as there was between my father and thy father. Behold, I have sent thee silver and gold. Go break thy league with Baash, king of Israel, that he may depart from me. And Ben-Hadad hearkened unto king Asa and sent the captains of his armies against the cities of Israel. And they smote Ejon and Dan and Abelamim and all the store cities of Naphtali. Let's go down to verse number seven now. And at that time, Hanani, the seer, came to Asa, king of Judah, and said unto him, Because thou hast relied on the king of Syria and not relied on the Lord thy God, therefore is the host of the king of Syria escaped out of thine hand. Verse number eight. Were not the, Ethiopia, were not the Ethiopians and the Lubians a huge host with very many chariots and horsemen, yet because thou did rely on the Lord, he delivered them into thine hand. For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong in behalf of them whose heart is perfect toward him. Herein thou hast done foolishly, therefore from henceforth thou shalt have wars. Then Asa was wroth with the seer and put him in a prison house, for he was in a rage with him because of, his, of this thing. And Asa oppressed some of the people the same time. Oh, my goodness. Things have changed now with Asa. Why did things change suddenly? We see that Asa had a perfect heart before God for... 35 years, 35 years Asa was a good king, doing right, and he had a perfect heart before God. Everybody say he had a perfect heart. He had a perfect heart. But in the 36th year, we see that the king of Israel started coming up against him, and he brought up a siege against his city, and he, he wouldn't let anybody go out and wouldn't let anybody come in. And so what would happen now? We see that Asa becomes afraid. Earlier when he received the word from God, 
he was a man of courage. He wasn't afraid of anything. All the way to the point of taking his mother down from being queen. So he, would, he didn't fear anything. But something happened in those 35 years. What happened in those 35 years? I believe he became complacent. I believe he became comfortable. He was used to receiving all the blessings and the benefits of God. All of these things had just become to a point where he was just so used to it that he really began to get lifted up in pride. Now, what we find is that he goes to the Syrian army and he asks the king if they can intervene for him. And what does he do? He, he goes into the house of God and he takes the silver and the gold and all of these treasures and he bribes the king of Syria. How many of you know that from this time on, Syria has been an enemy of Israel <laughs> all the way until this day? And so now we find that they had been allies for a while and 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 he wanted him to break their Break, break their treaty with Israel so that they could help Judah to win a war against Israel. So he depended on another army to come in. Now most people would say, well, there's nothing wrong with that, is it? Well, let's look at what the problem was. Another prophet came to him. Prophet Hanani. He is a seer. That's what a prophet is. And he came to ask the king of Judah in verse number seven. And he said, because you have what relied on the king of Syria and not relied on the Lord thy God. Therefore is the host of the king of Syria escaped out of thine hand. What he means by escaping out of his hand means that they were under your control, under your authority. They were they, you, you, you had them. But because you made this mistake and began to use them and, and, and bribe them to help you to win against this other army and you didn't call upon the Lord. He said, now they're gonna become enemies to you. They have escaped out of your hand, out of your control now. And so now they're out of the control of Israel and Judah. So we're finding now some of the same things that happens with us even today. How many of you know that there are many people who will start off well there are many people who run this race and it look like they're doing so good. They'll, they'll get in church and they begin to be uh, really faithful and they'll serve even for a number of years. Some people may not go a number of years, but there are times when people will do so well, but, uh, but, but they have things to come up that seem to turn them away from God. And when we see that Asa begin to get comfortable it leads him into complacency. And this, this comfort and this complacency is really nothing more than selfish pride. I've seen many people do the same thing. They, they, they really get to the place of where they're just so used to routine and they're just going on. And, and there are folks out there who are, who are not saved and, and they can, they'll be on the outside looking in and they can tell many times, even when Christians are, or people who say they're Christians, they begin to backslide and they say, well, you used to be like this. You used to go to church. You used to be in the word. And, and now here you are back out in the world doing the same old things we're doing. People are observing us all the time. They, they know when your life is going backwards, but more so God knows. And that's why it's so important for us to know that we got to do more than just, just uh, have a perfect heart, but to seek God with a perfect heart. All right, what else do we find here? We find that when the selfish pride came in, Asa lost focus. And when we have selfish pride, we lose focus. We lose focus on who God is, who we are, what our purpose is. And whenever we lose focus, that's when we begin to go backwards. That's when we begin to uh, lose our, uh, the, the faith or fall, fall away from faith. The Bible talks about in the last days, there'll be many people who will fall away from faith, fall away from the faith. It says that Asa depended on another source. Many of you know that when we begin to fall away from the faith, 
we start trusting other sources. We start looking to other things for help. We forget to call upon the Lord. Back when things were going uh, the way it should, Asa was seeking God and depending on God. But then when things began to get comfortable for him, he started getting selfish pride. And so when the army started coming against him and trouble started coming against him, he forgot to go to God as his source. Oh, yeah, we, we, we go to the job. That's our source. Oh, yeah, we, we, we go to the doctors. That's always our source. We forget that God is the healer. We forget that God is the provider. God is the one who, who, who is uplifting us. God is the one who gives us our health and our, and our well-being. But he wants us to realize that he's got to get the credit for it all. And if he's not getting the credit for it all, guess what? It's going to lead to calamity. As we, as we keep going on, we see that Asa depending on another source, the next thing that happened, it says that he started doing God's work for him, trying to take credit for himself. That's the next thing we start doing. We start doing God's work for him, trying to take credit for ourselves. How many of you know that we can't save not one soul? How many of you know that we can't heal anybody? But so often try to take glory for ourselves. Uh, even, when we're, even when we're in ministry, we have to be very, very careful not to try to take all the glory for ourselves. And people begin to praise us. People begin to congratulate, oh, you did a good job. Oh, you did that well. Oh, you were great. And then we begin to take all the credit rather than say, well, to God be the glory. How many of you know that we can do nothing without the Lord? But see, we, we know it in our head, but oftentimes we don't really do it. <laughs> you know, we, we know it in our head, but we don't really know it in our heart like we ought to because we still have that in us where we just want to take some credit. We just want to feel good. We like it when people lift us up. We like it when people pump us up. And then when that starts to happen, you know, we thinking that we're the ones that's doing everything and then we can call the shots. Because everything was going so well for Asa, he thought he could call the shots and that and, and basically he made himself to be more like God. But let's look at what happened to Asa and I'm going to come back down to these things that we, we're seeing that, that happens to people. Asa, it says in verse number 11, it, it says, and behold, uh, the acts of Asa first and last, lo, they are written in the book of the kings of Judah and Israel. Verse 12 says, And Asa in the thirty and ninth year of his reign was diseased in his feet until his disease was exceeding great. Yet in his disease he sought not the Lord, but to physicians. And Asa slept with his fathers and died in the one and fortieth year of his reign. So it, 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 it it has a sad ending here, doesn't it? Because it says here that Asa, once he was lifted up in pride, and then the, the prophet comes to him and he begins to rebuke him for what he did, Asa got upset with the prophet. Asa got angry with the prophet and began to, uh, you know, he wanted to arrest the prophet, get rid of him. Well, the prophet didn't do anything but just tell him the truth. But once he heard that, he got angry with him, and then it says he began to oppress the people. And when that happened, the next thing that, that, that comes up is that in the uh, 39th year of his reign, it says his feet became diseased. Now, we don't know necessarily what that was. I have a friend who is a podiatrist, and he said he had studied into this and said that what he had was gout in his feet. But what, whatever it was that he had, he had it for a whole year and he died the next year. And it said that while he had the disease in his feet, yet he sought not the Lord. So his ending was different from the way he began his reign. He sought not the Lord and then he died. Now, as we go on, we see uh, Asa dependent on other sources, his physicians, and everybody else, but he didn't go to the Lord. Isn't it amazing how a person can get so caught up in selfish pride that they forget about the power of God and begin to go and seek their own resources? Then it says he started uh, doing God's work for him and taking credit for it. And after that, his attitude changed. And then he began to mistreat the people. 
When his attitude changed, he began to mistreat the people. It led to failure. Everybody say pride leads to failure. But I want us to observe something here. It says back up in verse number 17 in chapter 15, it says that nevertheless, the heart of Asa was perfect all his days. Now, we, we just read down to where his days ended. So was his heart still perfect? Well, let's look at some things here. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 11, verse number six. Hebrews in the New Testament Chapter 11 and verse number 6. And when you have that, say, I got it. All right. Hebrews 11 and verse number 6. Most of us probably can read it by, or, or know it by heart, but nevertheless, I want us to read this out loud. You have it? Read. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. I'm talking about God. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Now, what's going on with Asa here? He was a good king and he started off a man who was seeking God and a man who had a perfect heart. But here it says, without faith, it is impossible to please God. For he that cometh to God must what? Believe that he is. Believe that he is what? Believe that he is everything he says he is. When God introduced himself to Moses, he said, I am that I am. I am what? I am all you need me to be. I am your healer. I am your savior. I am your deliverer. I am your doctor. I am your lawyer. I am your peace. I am your joy. Everything you need, that's what I am. I am your food when you're hungry. I am your water when you're thirsty. I am all of these things. And you can believe all of that. And that is very important that you believe that. They that come to God must believe that he is all of that. But it must not stop there. It has the word and, which is a conjunction. Meaning that there is more to this than just believing that he is. It says, you must come to God believing that he is and that he is a rewarder of who? Them that do what? Them that do what? Diligently seek him. So you believe that he is all that he says he is, all that he claims to be. And yet you also need to believe that he is a rewarder of those who diligently Diligently seek him. Believe he is. What is he talking about? To believe means that he is all that he claims to be. But then when it comes down to this reward thing, what is he talking about? He's going to reward you with something. How many of you know that when you believe in God and you are baptized, it says that then you shall receive the what? Gift of the Holy Ghost. This is the reward that you receive when you truly believe that God is all he says he is. Why? Because the Holy Ghost is your guarantee of eternal life. The Holy Ghost is the power of God. There are many people who believe in God and they believe that he is, but they don't have the Holy Ghost. Amen. They, don't, they can believe all of these things, but they don't have God's power living in them. That's the reason why you have to diligently seek him. Because there's more to it than just believing. Because the devil believes and he trembles. And the devil can't get saved. So God wants you to keep going. Don't just say, I believe. Because that believing is only going to take you so far. Yes, it's important that you believe initially. That's what gets you in the door. But God wants to give you a gift. And the gift is his power living in you. His anointing that will be upon you so that you will be able to live the life on earth you're supposed to live. Amen? Amen. Before you get to eternity in heaven. All right. So he says that it's important that you believe and you believe what he claims to be. And then it's important that you diligently seek him. How do you diligently seek? How, what is diligent? The word diligent means nonstop. Everybody say nonstop. nonstop. It's nonstop and continual. Non-stop and continual. We see that Asa went 35 years. 
And then he stopped. Then he got so lifted up in pride, he began to depend on man rather than on God. So when he went that far and got that comfortable, pride was lifted up in him and he began to go away from God. All right. He was not faithful as he once was. What, what people do many times, instead of just continuing on, they get to the place of where they say, well, I'm tired now. I've been serving the Lord all these years. And so I, I need to take a break. I need to take a vacation. How many of you know we shouldn't be taking vacations on God? Amen. The reason why people want to take a break and why people get burnt out and why people want to take a vacation on God is because they're really just serving God like they're a slave. Rather than to do it willfully and lovingly. See, when you, when you seek God and do it willfully and lovingly, there's no effort in it. It's just, it becomes a part of who you are and what you are. But there are some people that make serving God a task. It is, it is like, well, here I go again. They get a bunch of tracks and then they go out and, well, I got to go out and do my witnessing today. It's a job. It's a task. It's a burden. You know, you might, uh, yeah, I'm doing the will of the Lord. There are lots of people doing these kinds of things. And it's not even in the power of God. It is in their own effort. And without the Holy Ghost, you can't be a witness anyhow. Amen. Scripture says you shall receive what? Power, which is ability. God's ability upon you. You shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Right. Then you will be my witnesses, both in Jerusalem, Samaria, and the uttermost parts of the earth. Right. Come on, he didn't say you shall receive tracts. <laughs> he didn't say you shall, <laughs> you shall receive you know, you shall receive a commission from your organization. He says, power, which is the Holy Ghost. This is the reward. Those who diligently seek him. Maybe you can understand that story in Acts chapter number eight a little bit better about uh, Simon, who was the sorcerer. And all the people that were in Samaria, they listened to Philip. And it says that they believed and they were baptized. So they got to the point of believing and were baptized and Simon, the sorcerer, also believed and he followed along with Philip. But when the apostles came out of Jerusalem, realized that these people believed, then it says that they had to lay hands upon them before they received the Holy Ghost. When the people believed and then the apostles came and laid hands on them, they received the Holy Ghost. Then they got the reward for eternal life. They guaranteed their assurance of eternal life comes from the power of God, the Holy Ghost. Now, up until that point, they believed. They, they, had a, they had a perfect heart before God. But apparently, Simon the sorcerer did not have a perfect heart before God because it, uh, and if he did, to a, to a degree, he lost that because when he began to ask the apostles if they would sell him the Holy Ghost, Peter said to him, because see, what he wanted to do was make money from it. He saw that when they were laying hands on people and they were receiving the power of God, he said, well, now I'll purchase this power from you so that when I lay hands on people, they will also receive the power of God. And, and, and Peter began to tell him, he said that he, you're in the gall of bitterness because your money will perish with you because your heart is not right before God. So that's why sometimes you have people who will come into an organization or come into church or whatever, and their heart may not really be right. They, they might have felt something one day and said, ooh, I need to join the church. Or they might have felt something and they say, oh, well, I, I must be saved then. And just because they felt good, just because they heard a good song, just because they, they believed or had a good message, they think they're right now. But you cannot endure until the end unless you have the spirit of the Lord. Amen. They that have not the spirit of Christ are none of his. Amen. That's why he rewards those who diligently seek him. Amen. Some people, they, they receive everything all at once. I mean, they get born again. They get filled with the spirit. They get baptized with the spirit. They begin to speak in other tongues. They prophesy. Oh, everything seems to come to some people all at once. Why? God already knows what he has in store for them. And he knows that they're going to diligently seek him. They have the right purpose in mind. But then there are others who really don't have the right purpose in mind or they just need to grow a little bit. They need to, they, they need to take a little time first to really get their heart all the way right. 
Now, what, is the, what does it mean to have uh, your, a perfect heart? Well, you see, a perfect heart before God means this, for you to have the right intention. The right intention. Everybody say the right intention. Right. You can have the right intention for something and still don't do it. Amen. How many of you know that you can have the right intention and not do what you thought you were going to do or said you would do? Mm -hmm. oh, oh, that happens to me every now and then because in my own human effort, I can't always uh, fulfill everything I thought I could do. OK, so we can have good intentions. Everybody, everybody got good intentions for something. Everybody had good intentions to be in church on time, but just couldn't make it on time. Everybody has good intention to uh, get on the treadmill and try to lose some weight, but it just doesn't happen. Everybody has good intention to, you know, do this or come there and go and do whatever you thought you were going to do it, but it just didn't happen. How many of you have ever had good intention, but just didn't follow through? Good intentions is, really means not very much, but it's good to have good intentions, but sometimes Good intentions is just not enough, and especially in this case. So a perfect heart without seeking God is something that all you're doing is having good intention, but without seeking God with the perfect heart, then you're going to fail. <laughs> and then in the case of Simon the sorcerer, he was seeking the power of God, but he didn't have a perfect heart. He still failed. How many of you know that both are absolutely necessary in order to live right? Because seeking God means that you are learning, you are growing in the knowledge of God because you are going after God. Just like the songs we were just singing, I'm chasing after you. <laughs> I know you are the living word. I'm chasing after you. I'm going after what I know I need. And I'm not going to stop. I want to be just like Jacob. Jacob wrestled with God. See, his name was Jacob, meaning supplanter. But because he began to wrestle with God, God changed his name to one who would strive with God. And that's what we ought to be. Because what Jacob was doing when the angel came and began to wrestle with him, the angel was trying to leave when the daylight was coming. And he said, I don't want to let you go until you bless me. He said, you better bless me before you get out of here. So he wouldn't even let him go. The angel had to, you know, hurt his leg in order for him to turn him loose. That's the way we ought to be about God. Diligently seeking him. Meaning that I am, I am going, I am determined to get everything God's got for me. I am determined. Everybody say you got to be determined. And with that determination, along with the right intention, God will reward you with all that you need. Oh, somebody ought to say amen right there. Amen. So this whole thing is just like that little story you probably heard as a child, the tortoise in the hare. <laughs> I remember, I, I, I know I was about, probably about 12 years old or so, and I used to be in the junior high, I'm not, I'm sorry, it was the, the junior choir at our church, and they gave me a song to sing. And that song went something like, long, long time ago, my heart was troubled within. My head bowed down with sorrow, but the devil had me wrapped within. I started out seeking salvation, had a hard time resisting temptation, but I kept on searching till I found the king of kings. I kept on searching, kept on searching, kept on, kept on searching till I... How many of you ever heard that song before? You know, and, and that's, that's what it's about. You've got to keep on going. For they that endure until the end, the same shall be saved. The tortoise and the hare started out together. They challenged each other. I think it was the, the hare, which is a rabbit, the tortoise, which is a turtle. And the hare began to challenge that turtle. He said, I, I can beat you in this race. And we're going we're gonna to run this race, and I know I can beat you. And the tur turtle said, I'm going to take you up on that, that challenge. Let's go. So he said he'll get to the finishing line first. And so now... They take off and, they decide, and the, the tortoise, tortoise got a head start because the rabbit said, I'm going to give you a head start. You get on as far as you can and I'm going to catch up and pass you and I'll still beat you to the finish line. So we find that in, later on in the story that the, the tortoise had gotten off to a, a long head start. Then the rabbit took off 
And when he caught up with the turtle, he looked at him and started laughing at him and said, I'm going to get there before you do. And he decided he'd go on up ahead and he got to a tree and he laid down at the tree and he began to, to take him a long rest. Took him a nap. And while he was napping, that turtle walked right on by. <laughs> turtle was going at a slow and steady pace. He never slowed down. He never speeded up. He just kept going at a slow and steady pace. Some people say, well, you know, the race is not given to the swift or the strong. But they that will what? Endure to the end. Don't matter how fast you are or how impressive you are. If you would just be faithful, if you would just continue to seek God with all your heart, you're going to make it. See, the turtle wasn't so concerned about racing and getting there first. He just wanted to get there. And so when the rabbit finally woke up, he figured the turtle hadn't got there yet. So he took off and ran. And when he got to the finishing line, the turtle was already there receiving his reward. <laughs> That's how we ought to be, folks. Don't worry about trying to be impressive. Don't worry about trying to impress other people. But we need to continue to seek God with a perfect heart. Don't just seek him for all he can give you and all he can do for you, but because of who he is. Seek his face and not his hand. But if you have the right intention, God rewards you and blesses you with everything you're supposed to have in the kingdom. But if all you got is just the right intention, good intention, you're not going to make it. Eventually, you're going to drop off eventually. But you got to realize the right intention plus doing what you say you would do would get you there. Amen. Israel didn't keep that oath like they said they would, but we've learned so many lessons from them. And today, God gives you everything you need to make it. We find a lot of people, they say they're afraid of getting in church and getting involved in the things of God because they saw somebody else who didn't make it. That one came, that one failed, that one didn't make it, that one messed up. But you're not them. You got to be determined that I'm going to make it. And the only way I'm going to make it is that I know that I seek God, that he will receive, that he will give me the power to keep going. The power comes from God, not from you. And then you can do all things through Christ, which strengthens you, not your own strength. How many of you know that you don't have the strength in yourself? You can't live like this by yourself, but you need the strength and the power of God to make it in this life. Somebody ought to give him an offering of praise today. Hallelujah. Lift your hands and we're going to pray before we go into communion this morning.